Hello everyone and welcome to Talent Sprint. Our discussion in this session will be on triangle and its properties which is a part of geometry. Geometry as you all know is a branch of mathematics that deals with the study of shapes, figures and its properties. And this is one of the oldest sciences which goes back to the times of Euclid, Pythagoras and other great philosophers and mathematicians who have contributed to this field. As such, geometry is a vast subject, but keeping in mind the type of questions that we get in various competitive exams, we shall limit our discussion only to plane geometry. Now what is plane geometry? Plane geometry deals with plane figures like triangle, quadrilaterals that include a square, rectangle, a parallelogram, rhombus, trapezium, etc. and circles. So primarily plane geometry is the study of plane figures and its properties. And in this particular session, we shall focus on triangle and its properties. Now before we learn anything about triangle or any of its properties, let us understand a few important terms relevant to geometry. The first one here is point. Now what is a point or how do we define a point? In simple words, point is the most simple geometrical shape, right? Point is the simplest geometrical shape that can be drawn and it has got no size, right? So point is the minimum of all the different geometric shapes that we have, right? The simplest geometrical shape. Next comes a line. What is a line? Well, line is a collection of infinite points, right? A line is described only by its length, but it has no breadth, right? So no breadth or negligible breadth, but only a length. And on this length, we have infinite points. So line is basically a geometrical shape that is described only by length and it has got infinite points on it. It extends up to infinity, right? The next one here is line segment. Now, what is a line segment? Well, as the name says, line segment is a part of the line, right? Line segment is that part of the line which uh, falls between the two given points, right? So the difference between a line and a line segment would be that a line extends up to infinity, but a line segment has a defined length and it is of that length which falls between the two points, okay? And it has all the other infinite points in between the two given points there. Now, after learning about line and line segment, the next one is a ray. What is a ray? Well, ray is also a line segment, but it extends up to infinity, right? Lay, ray is a line segment that extends up to infinity in one of the directions. It is basically a unidirectional uh, line segment which goes up to infinity. And the last one here, before we look at uh, triangle and its properties, is angle. Angle again is one of the most important terms when it comes to geometry. What is an angle? Well, angle in simple words is an angular distance, right? It is uh, the angular distance between the two rays which meet at a common point or when two lines intersect at a point, we find different angles uh, there, right? And each angle defines the distance between uh, the two lines or the two rays that are connected through a common point. And not just for lines or rays, even when two planes intersect, let's say there are two rectangular planes which intersect uh, right at some uh, point or in some uh, direction there, right? Now, even when two planes intersect, we find some angle between them, right? Or some angular distance between them, which is nothing but the angle between the two planes. Now, based on measurement, angles can be classified into various types. For example, an acute angle. What is an acute angle? It is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees or an angle less than 90 degrees is referred to as an acute angle. Then obtuse angle. What is an obtuse angle? Angle greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees, right? So an angle between 90 and 180 is an obtuse angle and between 0 degrees and 90 degrees is acute angle. What is a right angle? Right angle is exactly 90 degrees. Next comes a straight angle. Straight angle is 180 degrees, right? So any straight line, if you take the angle, there will be 180 degrees at any point. So that's called a straight angle. And next one is a reflex angle. Reflex angle is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, right? Greater than 180 and less than 360 degrees is a reflex angle. What is a complete angle? Well, complete angle, as the name says, is complete angle right 360 degrees so an angle of 360 degrees is called a complete angle so based on measurement the different angles are 
Acute angle, which is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Right angle, exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse angle, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Straight angle, exactly 180 degrees. Uh, reflex angle, between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. And a complete angle is 360 degrees. Also, there is something known as supplementary angles and complementary angles. So what are these two types of angles or what is meant by complementary angles and supplementary angles? When two angles add up to 90 degrees, these are referred as complementary angles, right? When the sum of two angles is equal to 90 degrees, then the two angles are called complementary angles. And when the sum of the two angles is 180 degrees, then the angles are called supplementary angles. For example, 60 degrees and 30 degrees. What is the total? 90. 60 plus 30 equals to 90. So these two angles, 60 degrees and 90 degrees are complementary. Likewise, 85 degrees and 5 degrees complementary angles right supplementary should add up to 180 degrees so for example you know 150 degrees and 30 degrees what is the total 180 degrees so 150 and 30 degrees are complementary angles likewise you know 179 degrees and 1 degree right 179 degrees plus 1 degree is equal to 180 degrees so even these two angles are called uh, supplementary angles so angles when they add up to 90 complementary and when they add up to 180 degrees they are referred to as supplementary angles now let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is parallel lines right what are parallel lines well parallel lines are two lines which would never meet each other even if they are extended up extended uh, infinitely right uh, basically the distance between two parallel lines is constant throughout their length so here as you see these two horizontal lines can be called parallel lines right these two lines would never meet each other since the distance between these two lines is constant throughout their length right so let's consider the two parallel lines here as a b and c d right a b is the first parallel line and c d is the second one and here we see a transversal now what is meant by a transversal this is the one that cuts the two parallel lines right so let's say ef is the transversal okay so two parallel lines are being cut by a transversal ef now if you observe at the points of intersection there are two points of intersection here right it cuts the first parallel line at this point and the second one at this point as we can see from this illustration there are different angles at both the points of intersection right we see you know different angles here for example let's say this is angle a then angle b angle c and this is angle d likewise at the second point of intersection we have four angles uh, let's say this is e and f g and h all right so a b c d are the four angles at the first point of intersection and e f g h are the next four angles at the second point of intersection now there are a few properties with respect to the eight angles that we see here right a b c d e f g h are the eight angles that we can see here now with respect to these eight angles there are a few important properties that we need to understand so let's look at each one of them now the first and the most simplest one here is that uh, there are various straight angles here what is a straight angle Angle, 180 degree right so if you look at combination of uh, two angles here we'll find many straight angles for example a plus d right angle a plus angle d is a straight angle since it is like a straight line the two angles should add up to 180 degrees right so these are straight angles a and d together likewise angle a plus angle b also is a, i mean also add up to 180 degrees right so a straight angle then d plus c b plus c and in this case here e plus f f plus g g plus h e plus h all these uh, pairs add up to 180 degrees which i'm sure is a very simple point and all of you are uh, clear with it then there is uh, something known as vertical angles right vertical angles are always equal for example if you look at the first intersection angle a will be equal to angle c right these are kind of opposite angles or vertical angles is what they're generally known as so angle a is equal to angle c angle a is equal to angle c right likewise angle d will be equal to angle b angle d is equal to angle b even in the second case here we find that angle e and angle g would be equal and h and f will be equal so angle e is equal to angle g and angle f is equal to angle h right so these are known as vertical angles next comes uh, corresponding angles now what is meant by corresponding angles here if you look at the first set and the second set there are four pairs of corresponding angles for example angle a corresponds to angle e 
right angle a and angle e are known as corresponding angles angle b and angle f are the second pair of corresponding angles angle d and h is the third pair of corresponding angles and the last one here is angle c with angle g right so if you look at it uh, at the point of intersection the angle uh, above and on the left side is a and here at the point of intersection the angle above and on the left side is e so corresponding a corresponds to angle e b corresponds to angle f d to h and c to g right now each pair of these corresponding angles are equal so the second point here is uh, that angle a is equal to angle e right we can say angle a equals to angle e likewise angle b is equal to angle f angle b is equal to angle f then the third set can be taken as d and h angle d is equal to angle h and the last one is c and g angle c is equal to angle g so all these are corresponding angles a, cor a is corresponding to e and they are equal b corresponds to f and they are equal d h and c g next we have alternate angles now what are alternate angles here there are two types of alternate angles interior alternate angles and exterior alternate angles right alternate angles are you know on the opposite side of the transversal for example what are the interior angles of the transversal now let's first understand interior angles and exterior angles there are four interior angles here if you look at the transversal interior angles are those which are between the two parallel lines so b c e h are interior angles and exterior are outside the two parallel lines so a d f g are exterior angles now we have interior alternate angles and exterior alternate angles so let's understand what are the interior alternate angles angle b and angle h are alternate angles and these alternate angles are equal angle b is equal to angle h right alternate angles are equal likewise angle c will be equal to angle e so we can say angle b is equal to angle h and angle c is equal to angle e right these are alternate angles on the alternate sides and interior because they are between the two parallel lines so when we say alternate interior angles are equal it must be clear interior and alternate so c with e and b with h these pairs are also equal likewise we have exterior alternate angles and i'm sure all of you have uh, all of you are clear with what is exterior alternate angles right so angle a will be equal to angle g right angle a equals angle g and angle d equals angle f angle d is equal to angle f right so uh, these are all vertical angles or opposite angles a c b d e g h f right so these are vertical angles generally called as vertical angles all right then how about a e b f d h and c g a e d h b f c g all these are corresponding angles so corresponding angles are equal so these are corresponding angles and next comes b h c e b h and c e represent interior alternate angles so interior alternate angles and we know that interior alternate angles are equal and the last one here is exterior alternate angles a g and d f a g and d f these are exterior alternate angles so this shows the equality between different types of angles when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal now apart from these equality between various angles we also find supplementary angles in this uh, uh, illustration here right we have already learned that there are various supplementary angles like ad are supplementary because the total is 180 right a plus d is a straight angle likewise d plus c is a straight angle a plus b is straight angle b plus c is also a straight angle similarly in the second case also we find four pairs of supplementary angles but then apart from these direct pairs of supplementary angles we also have a few indirect pairs for example angle b and angle e will add up to 180 degrees interior angles on the same side right we know that d e c h are interior angles remember interior angles on the same side are b and e always add up to 180 degrees so b and e are supplementary likewise interior angles on the other same side are on the other side are c and h so c plus h is also 180 degrees so we can say b plus e equals to 180 degrees and c plus h equals to 180 degrees an easy way of remembering this is interior angles on the same side are supplementary likewise exterior angles on the same side are also supplementary now what are the exterior angles a d f h now exterior angles on the same side a and f 
will add up to 180 degrees. So we can see A plus F equals to 180 degrees and hence these are supplementary. Likewise D and G will add up to 180. So D plus G is also 180 degrees. So this shows supplementary angles which are exterior and on the same side. The first two cases here show the supplementary angles which are uh, you know uh, interior and on the same side. And it is also very easy to understand why do we say that these are supplementary angles. See from the equality we we already know that B is A is equal to E right here we see that A is equal to E because A and E are corresponding angles A is equal to E and we also very well understand that A plus B is equal to 180 degrees because that's a straight line so this is a straight angle 180 degrees A plus B is 180 but A is equal to E so can I say E plus B is also 180 right so e plus b equals to 180 degrees likewise c plus h, equal, h equals to 180 how do we say that see c plus d is equal to 180 degrees that's a very straightforward point but d is equal to h where do we find d equals to h here because d and h are corresponding angles so c plus h will become 180 degrees same is the case with a plus f and d plus g so through the equality of various types of angles that we have seen here it is very easy to understand why do interior angles on the same side and exterior angles on the same side make supplementary angles